Well, hey there, it's Sandy Alnock with another World Watercolor Month video. And this one is an abstract, which is not something I normally do. But I thought for those who struggle sometimes with like, I don't know what to paint or I feel like painting, but I, I just don't have any ideas. This might be something that'll help you. So I thought I'd share it because I was uh, sick last week. I, I call it stress sickness. And this really helped to relieve some of that and to help get me back on the horse painting again. So I want to show you what I did. So I had a bunch of ATCs, artist trading cards, that needed to go out. And I wasn't feeling great because stress had just been relieved. Usually when I get to a big deadline, like I got to July 1st, the first day of World Watercolor Month, I had three classes fully launched and ready to go. And then I had another one that was underway, feeling like I was making all this progress. But since I had already told myself that I, I gave myself permission to let the Seascapes class wait a little bit longer, and just take my time doing it rather than trying to force it out by July 1st, I kind of had time on my hands. I didn't have to feel the pressure. So my body just said, okay, fine, we'll get sick now. <laughs> I ended up just not feeling great with stuff going on in the world. I just was in a bad way, but I needed to get back on the horse and get back to painting. And this really helped a lot. I went back in my mind to a class that I took last year in, uh, technically it was a, a, an abstract art class, but it was billed as a class to help you find your style. And I thought, oh, I would love something that helps me find my style because I am all over the place doing all different kinds of art all the time. It'd be nice to discover what my style is, but it was really just an abstract art class. And one of the things that they did though, that was helpful for me, was to talk about just take your normal medium and use other tools in applying it and make other marks that you don't normally make and see how that feels. And it was fun at the time. I remember having a good time with it, but I was like, I will never use half of that. And I know there are plenty of people who do exercises like this in their sketchbooks. I've done it a little bit. But I thought, you know, let me just do a whole page of these. I'll get some of the ATCs done, artist trading cards done, and I'll just have some fun with color. And besides which, this was a piece of paper doomed for the trash heap anyway, because there's other junk on the other side. It wasn't paper that I liked that I would end up painting anything great on the other side anyway. So why not just go for it? So I put the paint directly on the paper. I put it on a palette knife. I put it, like squeezed it out directly onto the brush here so I could get really dense paint. This technique does use a lot of color. So if you're using really weak color, you'll get a very pale look. But for me, I just wanted a lot of strong color because when I was trying to look for which tubes I wanted to play with, I also saw all of my many jars of Daniel Smith watercolor grounds. And I'm like, I haven't used those. I should use those. And again, it took me back to that class and thinking about some of the textures that I got in that class when I was doing some abstracts and I wanted to create something like that. So I used the grounds to make marks and went over all of that color with the black so that the color would rise up and then started adding lighter grounds on top of the black. So this is the gold grounds. And this one is, the gold grounds are thinner than the black stuff. And so once it was dry, I could just paint it on with this crazy brush. It's one that I got at the hardware store and just chopped a bunch of bristles out of it. I have only used it before in watercolor to do trees. So you can do like crazy tree branches with it. And then I got out the pearlescent white so that they'd have a little shimmer to them as well. So those who have received one of these in the mail will be able to see some of that shimmer. Maybe you can leave a comment and uh, let me know what you thought of your ATC. 
Because my goal here was really just to create something where when I cut this down into the artist trading card size of two and a half by three and a half inches, that each of those little rectangles would be very interesting. So I wanted, you know, marks, lines, directional, like motion of some of the marks everywhere so that anybody who gets one is going to get one with some interest to it. The very last thing I added was just some blobs of the water, uh, watercolor grounds. You could do this also with regular watercolors. You don't have to have the grounds to do it, but it starts using up a lot of paint after a while. And I did have all the grounds, so this was a, a good way to start using a little bit of it. And it was fascinating to just feel how painting this way felt in my body because it felt very different. It didn't feel satisfying in the normal, oh, look, at I painted a wonderful thing and it looks like a such and such. But it felt like I just painted intuitively in a way that I don't normally do. I, I normally think more. And this didn't require any thinking. It was very pleasant in that way. After letting it all dry in the sunshine for a couple hours, because all this thickness had to... Uh, go away. I took them all and glued them onto a rectangle of two and a half by three and a half inch gold card stock. Left a little border showing around the edges. Now ATCs can be just a rectangle of art like this. It can be part of a painting. Some of mine were. They were chopped up paintings that hadn't gone well, but I saved the good bits, made them into ATCs. And then on the back, you write your title of it, your medium, and if it's a series, you write how many that was, and then your name and an email address or whatever you know contact information you feel comfortable with. I usually just put my email address only so that you know if this gets handed off to somebody else, they don't have lots of contact information because, yeah, don't want to have all that out there on a little piece of artwork, but then put them into sleeves, which is also not required, but it protects them. And these are really cheap. I'll put the link to them on Amazon if you're interested in that. And uh, that's just about it. So I'll flip through these so you can see how each one came out with interesting features to it. Everything looks completely different. Each one of them is, is unlike any of the others. And yet they're all beautiful in, a, in their own way. And they, there's almost some of them that have a different vibe to them, a different emotion to them, uh, different intensity of colors. Uh, that one looks like a little ghost, like a ghost in the shape of a tooth. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a fun project to do and got me back on the horse. And I was ready to paint again once I finished all of this. Well, okay, once I got it all in the mail. So that's about it for today. Just wanted to show you that. Let me know if you decide to try this kind of painting because it's kind of fun and relaxing. I will see you in my next video and maybe, maybe we'll have the Seascapes class ready by then. I'll chat with you later. Bye-bye.